we have we have kind of been part of the problem ourselves. Mm. Uh, what I'm going to talk about now. Uh, earlier, two days ago, it was this breaking news, an article in The Guardian uh, about the chair of the COP meeting, uh, where they have come over what he said the week before. That upset me. It upset so many people. It became this bad story, uh, and he has been heavily criticized, everything from the general secretary to to other influential voices. Um, and and um, I mean, when I heard about it, I thought that he deserved it, of course. Uh, and for those that haven't seen this, I will read the quote why everyone was upset. The quote that was, the quote quote that that was, was sent out. The quote in yeah. The Guardian. Uh, that's triggered this, uh, where the, the broad story about it. Uh, so here's the quote. There is no science out there, no scenario out there, that says that the phase out of fossil fuel is what is going to achieve 1.5 degrees. This was a quote from Sultan al Jaber, the chair of the COP meeting, that upset many, including me. Um, but there is what was a second part of this, and, and to remember, this was in a Zoom call that was not an official meeting or anything that, that this was said. And I think most people are humans. We say things. Um, and I don't agree with that quote. But there was a second part of this quote that, didn't, that was not in the Guardian article. And that says, 1.5 is my North Star and a phase down and a phase out of fossil fuel is inevitable. It is essential. It's inevitable and essential, yes. yes. And he actually said both those yeah. things. So here's a little thing. If you're a negative person that thinks that people are doing the wrong thing, it's very easy to just cut that quote in half and focus on the negative thing. But you could also cut the quote and focus on the positive thing. It's amazing to have an oil CEO in an oil country and a share of a cup meeting saying that it's essential to phase out fossil fuel. And that it's its North Star. And it's a North Star. Mm -hmm. I don't often hear oil CEOs saying that. But in reality, I think it's human. It's someone thinking out loud, unscripted. Uh, so I think this is kind of a, a little bit mixed. And uh, it's also a very interesting conversation going on between uh, the, uh, yeah, please give the context when this conversation. This was a conversation place. between um, uh, Mary Robinson, the former president of Ireland, and and uh, the Sultan Al Jaber, mm. uh, and he is answering quite difficult questions. I, I really love uh, Mary Robinson for asking those questions. They She's a climate warrior, for, for sure. sure. Mm. Uh, and instead of us judging. I think we should hear this. So we have it on tape and we have transcribed it. And uh, it's a lot of discussion in the app where people have different opinions about it. Mm. So instead of judging, let's uh, play this uh, recording and, and see for ourselves what you think of it. Can I come in at this stage um, to say something? Can I come in at this stage um, to say? Sultan, I'm really pleased that you did accept the invitation that I extended to you when we were together in Beijing with the Friends of the Paris Agreement to take part in this summit. Um, I think one urgent message has come through in the entire day of the summit. I've heard it at every session, I think, and that is that we're in an absolute crisis that is hurting women more than anyone, women and children, the elderly, uh, those with disability, etc., and, and those most vulnerable. And it's because we have not yet committed to phasing out fossil fuel. That is the one decision that COP28 can take under your presidency. And in many ways, because you're head of the Abu Dhabi um, National Oil Company, you could actually take it with more credibility uh, by saying, I now recognize we have to phase out fossil fuel with just transition for the workers and their communities and just transition into uh, renewable uh, accessible, affordable 
uh, clean energy. Um, it, it's not going to happen overnight, as you say. It will be orderly but urgent. I didn't hear the word urgent enough in your voice when you spoke earlier. That's why I kind of interrupted. I said fast track. I'm not sure what urgent means. A fast track is not good enough. Fast track is, um, you know, it can be more of a managerial term. Uh, urgency is crisis, crisis mode. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can always play with words here. Um, you are a good politician, and you know how to use words better than I do. I'm a businessman. I am centered around delivery and actions. Well, will you and will you will you lead on phasing out, phasing out fossil fuel with just transition, as I've as I've said. You, the can, you can the... you can you can you can take the lead. I'll make sure I put you as an item on the agenda, and I'll adopt it. Someone has to take the lead. You are a developed, uh, you come from a developed country. Developed countries, I'm sure, can take the lead like they always do and uh, lead by example. You can lead by example. And like I said from the beginning, I accepted to come to this, uh, to this meeting to have a sober and a mature uh, conversation. Uh, we do not, I'm not in any way signing up to any discussion that is alarmist. I am here factual and I respect the science. And there is no science uh, out there or no scenario out there that says that the phase out of fossil fuel is what's going to achieve 1.5. 1.5 is my North Star. And a phase down and a phase out of fossil fuel, in my view, is inevitable. It is essential, but we need to be real, serious, and pragmatic about it. But the real serious and pragmatic doesn't take into account that we are in. I mean, I, I respect that you've done a lot of hard work preparing for this COP and that you've listened to the science. The science is very acute now. We don't have any time. They say six or seven years. We've got to peak by 2025, the latest in fossil fuel. You, you, new ma'am. fossil fuel. And your company is investing in a lot more new fossil fuel. And that's, that's, that's going to hurt women. Uh, ma'am. <laughs> you've, you've just accused me of something that is not correct. I'm sorry, I don't take it. Now I ask you to prove to I, me. I, I read that your company is, is investing in a lot more fossil fuel in the future. Yes, ma'am, you're reading, you're reading your own media, which is biased and wrong. I am telling you, I am the man in charge, and it is wrong, ma'am. You need to listen to me, please. I'm, I'm please, very, I'm very pleased to hear it. I'm very pleased to hear it. It is wrong. You guys write a lie, and you believe it. I'm well, sorry. I, I do not I accept it. What I, see, um, I am not accepting this. I'm sorry. I am sorry. I respect you, and I do not accept any false accusations. I've been very clear about my position. This is wrong, and you're asking for a phase out of fossil fuel. Please help me. Show me a roadmap for a phase out of fossil fuel that will allow that will allow for socio for sustainable socio-economic development. Unless you want to take the world back into caves. No. Show me. Yeah. I think we can. We have, we we can. have eight I think women, Give women me the will be part of that. Give me the solution. Give, you talk about having women be involved. We, in this small country, have included women more than any other country in the world. Mm-hmm. 50% of our parliament is women. 33% of our cabinet is women. 77% of our Emirati women enroll in higher education after secondary school. Our women make up 64% of our university graduates. I'm sorry. Get your facts straight, ma'am. No, no, I understand that. I know that about the UAE. But what I was... What I, what and I, I am sorry, you, I will not. Are you, I are will you not. actually... Can, you can, just I, can I suggest... Are you actually saying you're not going to invest in the future in fossil fuel with your Abu Dhabi um, uh, oil company? Say, say, say it again. Now, are you saying that I'm, I, I was mistaken in saying that you're going to invest in fossil fuel? Are you not going to invest in new uh, fossil fuel? Because uh, it's good to clarify. If that is untrue, I'll accept it from you. Ma'am, what is not true, what is not true is what you said, that we're doubling capacity. We're not doubling capacity. That's number I one. Say, I didn't number say two. double capacity. No, no, you said, I didn't use no. those words. I ma'am, use ma'am, words. ma'am, hold on. Let me just explain. Let me just explain. The world will continue to need energy sources. We are the only ones in the world today that have been decarbonizing their oil and gas resources. We have the lowest carbon intensity. We have the low, we are seven kilograms. I have not heard you talk to the Norwegians or others the way you talk to us. Time has come. Time has come. Mary, 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 time, Mary, time has come for you to I don't accept that I'm selective. Um, I talk to the Norwegians, I talk to the U.S., 
I talk, the elders talk to everybody across the board independently, but I, I'm glad that you're taking part in this discussion because you have such a role as president. If you can encourage that this because is I have, because I'm not a hypocrite, fuel, because, no, that would be because I'm not a because I'm not a hypocrite, and I am not shying away from any facts. I am here talking to you just like I did in China. Yeah. And I told you exactly you need to get your facts straight. Can I um, thank you for this exchange, for this robust and um, you know, positive exchange. I think a clear invitation from His Excellency uh, Jaber uh, Marie to uh, input into that roadmap and Marie for you to share the expectation uh, associated to this roadmap. I thank you for this exchange and I would like to bring uh, Samar into this conversation. Uh, Samar. Sophie. Yes. Sophie, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Mary interrupted me earlier. I'm going to have to come in uh, now. I don't yes. think Mary will be able to help solve the climate problem by pointing fingers or contributing to the polarization and the divide that is already happening in the world. What we need here is solutions. Show me the solutions. Stop pointing fingers. Show me solutions. Show me what you can do. Show me your own contributions. And I will salute you for it. Stop the pointing of fingers. Stop it. We, how we continue the discussion in society. Sima, what is your take here on, on the what happened here after the media picked out certain elements of this conversation and published it and not the entity of it? Uh, first, I will say that this was a conversation hosted by an organization called She Changes Climate. She Changes Climate, yes. Uh, it's a partner to We Are Time. They're mm -hmm. doing an amazing job mm -hmm. with uh, empowering women and have them uh, emp get them into the climate conversation that's needed, and they do a fantastic Indeed. job. Uh, and I think this uh, Mary did, uh, did a great job of having a kind of driving this yeah, conversation tough, that tough, is needed. It was a tough conversation, yeah. Uh, and, and the Sultan. Maybe it was not the most ordered conversation, but sometimes it's that the way it is. That's life. That's when we discuss something difficult with different opinions. We need to listen to each other. If we stop listening to each other, we will not solve the climate crisis. We will not solve anything internationally. And we need that more than ever today. And that's why I think it's so unfortunate with media's role that it's just clickbait. So what's happening when this story broke out, it was a shitstorm. Uh, and, and it was all over everywhere. It was top in the conversation. And in one way, I'm happy for the outcome because it's really have kind of, you know, the oil is top of the agenda now. The elephant is, is even uh, more but, enormous. Uh, it could also have very much backfired into that the chair of the COP meeting will have kind of resigned. Uh, and suddenly we will have a COP meeting with a new chair that we don't know who is. It could, I mean, uh, unprepared, and I think that could really break things down. It could be really dangerous for, for the whole process. And it was not just this single article. Uh, it's the narrative. Uh, so I just got a mail from another source uh, about another story. Uh, I think it was a week before COP. Uh -huh, yeah. And, and uh, it was from BBC that have this new breaking news about that COP, uh, the UAE was using COP to secretly uh, talk oil with other countries. It's a long article in BBC. Uh, and there's a new journalist, uh, very, very acknowledged journalist that have digged into this story. It's 11 pages here. You will find it on We Don't Have Time. Uh, that is also finding a lot of facts that this story is maybe not as much truth in it as you, it was a lot of conclusions there. Making a mountain out of a molehill, maybe. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we, I'm a climate activist myself, but we can't forget the truth. It's simple as that. We need to have a fact-based discussion. We climate people, we are always saying that, listen to science. We also need to say, listen to facts and listen to people that don't agree with you. Uh, and I'm very, very uh, 
proud that We Know Time are playing a role in this, because what you can do on We Know Time, besides watching our great content uh, or broadcast, is that you can have a conversation directly with leaders. And not just the leaders that are doing good stuff, but also the leaders that are not doing good stuff. And in fact, we have had all big oil, Exxon, Mobile, Shell and all the others, have responded to criticism directly on the We Know Time platform. Uh, Bolsonaro, the previous president in Brazil that is really unpopular, did respond on climate warnings on We Don't Have Time. Even if we don't like another person, we need to listen to their arguments and we need to talk directly with them without having someone interpreting what you say and, and tell you uh, uh, your opinion that you maybe are not agreeing to. Uh, that is super essential. So if you agree on that, go to weedonhotime.org, download the mobile app and join the dialogue directly with the leaders. See the facts yourself. You have your own opinion about what you just listened to. Uh, and, and, and don't just read what someone else is interpreting into things. It's a lot of propaganda. Uh, out there from both sides. We can't forget the truth. We need to get as close to the truth and to the source of information as possible. This is super important, mm -hmm. especially today. Mm -hmm.